I was recently challenged to hook up a studio display to my Mac Pro. Now a couple of different displays have shared that name over the years, but the model in question was the LCD that Apple sold from 99 to 2004 or so. The one with the clear acrylic feet that were pretty chunky and the bezel styles that matched the pinstriping in early versions of Mac OS X. When I was digging my example out of storage, I realized I had two other Apple displays. So today, I'll be hooking all three up to my tower to see if I can get them going. But before we get to that clear acrylic one, let's take a look at the often forgotten Apple Studio Display 15 inch. Even though Apple would reuse at least part of this name, it has little to do with later models as you can see. It sports a 15 inch LCD running at 1024 by 768, housed in a somewhat awkward translucent plastic case. It sold for $2,000 when it was new way back in 1998. Now mine is a Revision C model, so it uses DVI. The Mac Pro is covered in Thunderbolt 3 ports, and it's got a HDMI port, but that's way in the back, and as I don't have wheels on my system, I'm going to use the ports on the top of the tower. We'll be going from USB-C to HDMI with Apple's digital AV multi-port adapter, and then from HDMI to DVI with a second Apple adapter. That will feed video to the display, and we'll be using that multi-port one to hook up the built-in USB ports on the display, which are behind a hilariously huge rubbery door. As you can see, the monitor is seen by macOS Catalina right away, but the OS uses an icon for a much later aluminum cinema display. So here we have it, a 22-year-old monitor hooked up next to my LG 5K display, all powered by my 2019 Mac Pro. Now let's look at my 23-inch Apple Cinema HD display, hailing from 2004 to 2006. Clad in metal, it feels like the father to today's Pro Display XDR, but this one came with a stand included in its $2,000 price tag. It also uses DVI, but has FireWire and USB pass-through, so it's time for some more adapters to get that high-speed connection going again. We'll be going from Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 to FireWire 800 to FireWire 400. But as you can see, this works with no trouble spinning up this iPod without any issue. Oh, and if the foot of this display looks familiar, well, it's because Apple uses this basic design on the iMac to this day. Lastly, we have my 17-inch studio display that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Compared to the other two, it was a relative bargain at $1,000 despite having the same features like an adjustable viewing angle and a built-in USB hub. Unlike the other two though, this display uses the short-lived ADC connector, which combined video, USB, and power all over a single cable. This could be found on a bunch of G4 and G5 towers back in the day, but to hook it up to a modern computer, we need the largest dongle ever sold the $149 DVI to ADC adapter. This breaks out ADC into its individual components, including external power. Other than that, this is pretty straightforward. We'll use the same Apple adapters to get from Thunderbolt 3 over to DVI, and we'll pass USB from the Mac Pro as well. So what's the point of all of this, besides being the weirdest Apple adapter flex of all time? Well, there's probably not much of one, but it is cool to see hardware from a totally different era spring to life. I've got to hand it to Thunderbolt 3 for being backwards compatible with so many things. Thanks for watching. Be sure to get subscribed, and I'll see you next time. Adios.